How's it going, everybody? This is here from Sands and Aquatics in Jacksonville, Florida. We're setting up a new display tank in the shop. It's going to be for African cichlids, and we wanted to show kind of a start and finish on what we're planning on doing. We've got a 150 gallon tank here with a canopy, full stand, and we're running an FX4 behind it as well as two sludge filters that are going to go in there for extra aeration, extra uh, bacterial colony, all that. We just like to have backups with backups. Here in Florida, we get the hurricanes. You never know what's going to happen with your electricity at any given time. So we're going to show that start to finish. Uh, I've got all my rocks selected here, everything from your uh, standard flagstones and your base pieces, all the way up to 65, 70 pound rocks. So we're going to start here. Um, we'll fast forward through a little bit of it, showing us uh, putting everything in and, and all that. So I won't be talking too much over that. This is the base setup of what we're doing. First things first, you gotta remove your canopy. See, we've already got the other hung lighting. Let's take this guy off here. Step one is always clean the glass while it's dry as much as you can. A little bit of water in here from the first cleaning we did when we got the tank in here was not the prettiest thing in the world. Uh, we got a couple of scratches here and there, but it's a used tank. What are you going to do? Uh, these microfiber filter pads, everybody throws these things out. They do a pretty good job of cleaning up the face of the glass, and they'll also help you out that back part uh, sifting around some of the sand, especially if you're doing some aquascaping uh, plants and all that. Using a different tool will uh, pay in space. So, here. go behind it. I like to use just straight razor blades. Hurts a little bit on the hands every once in a while if you're doing a huge tank, but it's the only way to get your glass 100% clear of any of the stuff that's in here. You want to make sure not to go too close to the silicone because if you start that heat coming up, that's going to eventually cause a tank leak for you. All right, so we went through and we cleaned the front of the tank. Uh, we've already washed our rocks. It's a really important step to go through and make sure that you just hose everything off. Uh, get any of the, like we use a, a moss based rock that gets a lot of stuff coming and growing on it. So uh, we like to get a lot of that crap off. We leave a little bit of it for a little bit of character and that would be it for our fish to graze on. It's just organic algae for the most part. So uh, we'll go ahead and we'll start lifting everything in and I'll tell you why I escaped everything once I've got everything set up. You'll notice a lot of the tanks that are in our shop or that I'll ever do can be pretty minimal as far as the sand goes. I don't like to have it coming up over the lip just because I personally don't like it. Uh, the deeper the sand bed, the more it has a, an ammonia problem or a potential ammonia problem because it creates an anaerobic bacterial source.
that if you're going for a plant scape, you want to have your foreground that um, substrate be smaller than your background. It'll give that sense of depth that everybody's looking for. So you could have another two inches on the back here without any kind of issue and have your front meeting the glass. And that'll give you that, that scoping uh, depth that you're going for. We're not doing that today. So that's just a little side tip there. I like to start all of them with uh, the heaviest rock. Get that set in there. Then I'll start scaping everything as I load everything else in. set up, you want to go through and adjust your substrate one more time. You want to fill in all the little nooks and crannies that can make them fall. So that's what I'm going through and doing at this point. Alright, we're Settle out and we're going to fill her up. But back away so you get kind of the preemptive view. That's going to be our African tank. It'll have a boulder set up. One thing I may add here for this direction, something in this area kind of as a shelf. But as it sits now, I'm pretty happy as it is. You don't have any of the uh, any of the rocks actually touching the back wall. You can slide your hand behind every single one of them. The reason is, is because you don't want a fish to get trapped back there and die, or if the fish does die and is hiding, it can't ever float up to the top for you to see it. So you're looking at a potential ammonia spike in your tank. So you definitely want to make sure, just like salt water, you want to keep it free from the back glass. You want to be able to have things circle around it, the circulation. And uh, we're obviously, like I said, going to put a couple of sponge filters back here. So I'm hiding those as well. So all you see is the bubbles coming up out of it. You've got your filtration coming through with VFX. That's going to be pushing everything forward and out. While those are pushing everything up, you should create a decent circulation. If you run into a situation where you're not getting enough, a small power head, you want a $20 power head or something like that off of Amazon, you can go through, stick to the back here, and uh, go ahead and, and create that circulation that you're missing. But that just makes sure you clear all the poop and all the negative stuff out when you're going and you're cleaning the tank. It's got to the pythons not going to fit behind half of this. So uh, we're going to go ahead and step into the filtration setup and fill in the tank next. So go ahead and stay tuned for that. But I appreciate you staying with me. This again is Pure from Sands Aquatics. We'll be talking to you soon. All right, so we talked about using the FX4 that we're putting on this tank here. I went ahead and already undid the fittings. Just showing you kind of the internal setup of what we use. This is already cycle filter. We've already run a bunch of stuff on it, but everything's really, really simple with the FX4. Gives you an in, gives you an out. So you can't really screw that up. You know what's going inside your tank piece by piece. It's going to have a down tube that's always going to be on the intake. Because all it's really doing is flowing into the bottom of this. 
and you're getting pumped out of the app. Like most simple filter designs, it's a multi-stage cartridge. Sponges all around. I like to use pillow floss on the top. It's a really easy, cheap cleaner. You can see how much it's already soaked up. And uh, this is while cycling. You got that, the sponge becomes natural with the FX4. And then you've got ceramic media on the second layer. I'm not gonna pull all that out. Everybody knows what ceramic media looks like. If not, I can always do something on that layer. Go down. You want to do it just like you're doing a car tire. Something that a lot of people don't do is uh, using some silicone or some kind of lubricant on their gaskets. Make sure when you're getting a brand new one of these that you take the time to lubricate the gaskets. That way they last over time. They have a really bad problem in shrinking. It's rubber after all. So. All right, we should be set up. We're gonna go ahead and throw this underneath the tank and uh, get it all installed. We've already got our lines run up directly from the tank. Uh, you'll see those flowing in and out. I think you saw them in the setup as well. So we're going to go ahead and cut that and be right back. Okay, guys, so what we went ahead and did is skate the tank and make sure our substrate was in place. We've got the uh, FX4 underneath the cabinet. I hope you can see it in the shot. We've got the FX4 plugged in and rolling. Install the sponge filters. Uh, we're using 240 gallon sponge filters for the, uh, the entire tank. No, it's not enough to sustain the entire tank, but again, they're just fillers. If we need to take something out for quarantine purposes or anything like that, we have that option. Uh, so you see everything set up as far as the rocks go. We've gone through and plugged in our light, run it through the back of the hood. Now we put everything down. We can turn it on. And give us our full view. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stock the tank. Uh, we got to make sure this cycles through another couple of days. But we'll be back with you, and we'll stock the tank from top to bottom. Hey guys, here from Santa Aquatics. Uh, we went ahead and stocked that uh, 150 gallon tank that we had here. Now, I'm going to go through and just kind of label out some of the species we used. It's not fully cleared yet. We were using cycled media. So I want to point that out. We didn't just throw fish in a tank, uncycled, and all that. So obviously, I'm still wearing the same outfit. So, a couple of things that we have in here. We got Royal Nostradamus. He's a combination of a red entrance and a restrata. So he's got a lot of different color patterns. Uh, it's one of the hybrids that we've grown and sold out here. We've got uh, the Insignus. The is actually one of those absences uh, related to a red entrance as well. Uh, you're going to get that yellow belly and a really nice top white highlighter top fin. We've got some front toes that you can see in here. We've got two of the small guys, which are uh, the Tumbo, the Tumbi, excuse me. And we've got an Iwe that's back here, a big guy. Still come out. I don't think any African particular takes complete without blue dolphin. So, we all put her in there. This guy coming across here is a red top Rizzo. We've got some more Jollies. So they're leucistic versions of the White Knight. Uh, some get more of an orange to them, some stay with that plum body. But uh, you have the other White Knight right here from the Paris. You can obviously see it's got a lot more blue and white to it. Uh, you got an OP to press this up back here. Blue face, orange. I don't know how much of him I'm blocking, but he's not cooperating right now. Uh, obviously got a couple of OPs in there. Tangerine Tiger. Uh, we'll put a, let's see, we got Royals in there. A little bit of everything. I'll buy the Sunshines. I love these guys because they stay super, super yellow. But still have that albino look to them. So it gets a little bit of a highlight in the fish. Something different than all the dark. 
So again, just to give you a quick wrap up of what we did last time. We went in, we escaped the tank, made sure our substrate was right, we made sure our FX4 filter was correct. We've gone through and hooked up the lights. The only thing under there is the light. We've got some temperature gauges floating around because I want to make sure all the temperature stays right. The first couple of hours, make sure everything's fine there. We've got a blue ball 400 watt heater that's a titanium heater as far as our heat source. You can see that lined up in the back. And then got our smudge filters. So that's everything we've got to top to bottom. If you guys have any questions, please post them in the comments below. This again, this is Sam's Aquatics. My name's Pierre. Uh, my partner's Don. You should see a lot more from us coming soon.